And this is a talk about using Python to predict the reversal in a price of anything, a stock, Bitcoin, gold, whatever, dollars. Um, and to talk a little bit about trading and how I use Python to do that. Okay, so we're short in time, I'll rush at it. So the goal of trading, any guesses? Make money. Make money, profit. This guy, get this guy a, a job, man. And um, what can you trade? Anything anyone's willing to buy. Use toilet paper if there was a market and anyone would buy it and you could sell it. Anything you can trade, anything where a transaction can happen, anything where buyers and sellers can meet. And that is really one of the problems that uh, has infested the minds of people these days. They think that something actually has a value that is independent of what someone just sold it for. So anyone who knows anything about Bitcoin would know it's fairly crippled in the face of a couple of face rate hikes. Uh, and its price is way down around 20,000, right? just under 20,000 as we speak. Um, that's because the only people willing to buy it are only willing to give that much for it. And the people who are selling it are willing to let go of it for that much. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't produce anything. It's just, you know, the guy after you is going to buy it for whatever. So uh, buyers and sellers determine price. And the history of price is the trend. And the trend is your friend. Um, so let's take a look at the trend real quick. Like I said, um, this is Twitter. Eight-year price trend. IPO at $44, currently, I think it's at $32 today, but it's around 33, it was 33 yesterday. Um, Dorsey's departure, curiously at the top. Elon's activity, curiously near the low. Um, what this tells you is a, the price transaction history for Twitter. And it isn't actually a bar line graph, it's a candlestick graph. And if anyone knows about candlesticks, it charts the open, low, the high and the close price. Of the, of, the, of the asset in that time block. So you're looking at a daily chart. Each line, each vertical line candle represents a day in that chart. Um, and some people try to do this stuff with only close and price. It doesn't work. You need, all, you need all five elements to do it. So the candlestick chart, as you see here, this is another daily chart. Um, each one of those blocks on that chart represent the price action in that day for that asset. Overall, it's going up, but you can see it's up and down in the day. The volume is across the bottom. That's open, high, lows, close, and volume. Five data points needed before you even think about machine learning. Anyone who wants to get a machine learning library and do close and price, good luck losing money. Um, these are the breakdown of the candles. Like I said, green ones are bullish. They mean the price went up. Red ones are bearish. The price went down. Open on the, I'll just move away from the mic, on the thick bit down here. I'll speak a little louder just for the people at home. Uh, that's the price you open at. You could have dipped there in the in the time period. You could have got as high as here, but you finished up here. Right. So that tells you a lot in a day about what's happening. A candle with a narrow body and tall wicks, as we call it, very volatile day. Candle with a huge body, tiny wicks, you know, very steady move up. So price is not a thing bestowed on a stock, like we said. Twitter, IPO 44, today down 33, down 25%. What a loser. But the price varied a lot in between. Every price is a recorded settlement between buyer and seller. So two people were thinking exactly the opposite. The buyer was convinced it was the right thing to buy. And the seller was, thank God I got the sell. Every transaction a seller has offloaded onto somebody. Every time. Remember that like it, it, is, it is really human sentiment. And we'll, we'll get a little bit into the, the fundamentals of Twitter. But 25% um, down, not really, over 1,100% of price movement if you knew where the reversals were. You put down $1,000 in that, you have 1.1 million. If you knew where the price would move or potentially where it could. So Python for me, it's an amazingly handy language to work with. I find it very to the point. I find it very easy to do maths and dissect uh, tabular data in Python. And so I realized I wanted to find these reversal zones. I wanted to analyze the trend. Python and a Raspberry Pi, coincidentally, was a thing for me. And 1,100% is something I'm very interested in. I mean, I don't know who's not. <laughs> Fail! Right. So predict the future. Predict the price reversal. You can't actually predict when it's going to reverse. Notice I have little arrows on the peaks and the bottoms there, right? You can only tell that after it happened. So the real trick is to know when it might happen. That's the difference with machine learning approach and actually trying to use levels in price action. So um, this is a stock, you know, 
Uh, you say, aye, man, I got the closing price. I, I nailed it. And look at the yellow line. It's brilliant, except it's after the price it's lagging it. There is no point in knowing that you're going to have a reversal two days late. <laughs> I mean, it's admirable. I mean, this, this is great. Like, you know, the machine can follow, but it can't tell you what's going to happen. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it happens in Magical Lock. You know, the trick is done earlier on. And then at the point where the trick is revealed, people think it just happened then. It didn't. It was a setup. And with stocks, the reversal can only be identified after you've pivoted and moved away significantly. Uh, here's another one. Here's the, the other huge fallacy. I sell in the red, I buy in the green. How did you know the red was a peak until after the peak when it's too late to sell? I mean, like, it's very simple. This is a day. The next day it's down. Did... Can you sell the next? Can you go back and say, hey, look, I sell it for $50 more than it is today because I figured out yesterday it was worth more? <laughs> what? You can't do that, right? So it, it's a really tricky problem with trading because often people look back and what they should have done is, is what gets in on your mind. And um, so it's a tricky thing. Captain Hines say, man, if only I had done what I thought yesterday, I would be rich today. But you're not. Real financial advice, nobody can predict the future. That's the first real financial advice I'd give you working in banking a long time, I used to think that the people in the business knew stuff, you know, and that people in technology didn't. And then I learned this, and the people in the business don't know either. <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't it? So no one can predict the future, no one can predict it, but uh, you can locate a low risk entry for a trade where you want to buy, but you can still lose. You have to, the strongest organ you need to trade is your stomach, not your brain. Okay, your brain is good to figure out when you want to get in. Your stomach is good to keep you in there. Holding is not a strategy. You've got to sell out as well, okay? Anyone who held Bitcoin from 64 down to now, sorry. You know, it's just not worth it, really. You know, it was worth it when it was three times the price. Um, so strategy, get it right. So let's look at Twitter again for a second. There is a theory based on Fibonacci numbers that prices reverse the Fibonacci levels. Sounds stupid, does it? Fibonacci, why would it be important, right? Well, let's just look at this chart for a second before we do a little experiment. Twitter came down here. If you chart from the high to the low, it retraced and extended 2.618 times the downtrend. If the downtrend was a 100% move, let's say, you know, a move of 40 miles, multiply 40 by 2.618. Get 80, 90 something. You know, that's how much it's going to move back up. And it did. It reversed, hop on the line, which is, you know, where we set the new level. And we work it down to the bottom, you know, the next, the next big major move down. That's why these arrows, these points are in orange. I can't trade them because I'm still in the downtrend. It's, it's difficult. But when you spot a bottom, and a second touch the bottom, meaning that buyers have orders in the book and absolutely will not allow the price to go any lower. They're willing to soak it up at 12 bucks as hard as possible. And a third time confirmation, that is a bottom. And lo and behold, it will pull back when it hits the first retracement level. It will pull back and find support. It will pull back at the line. It went over the line there, fair enough. It doesn't always work out. But it hit the line, 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 hit, 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 hit. Because bots understand what people don't understand about themselves. So let's do an experiment in Fibonacci. May I have eight volunteers real quick? Can I just grab five of you people here? Can you stand up? You're famous. You're famous. Come on, man, stand up. You're famous. This is awesome. Yay, yeah, thank you. Wall Street. We got the wolf of Wall Street, the lion of Wall Street, the tiger, the bear, and the master of Wall Street, right? So, first of all, you're going to buy Microsoft, right? I want you to walk over there and buy it. All right, buy Microsoft. What's he doing? He's just buying. Why? Because he should be buying. Do no, you want to? It's fine. Do you want to? You want to take a chance? Go on, you buy. I'll buy. It's two have gone over. Do you want to buy? What the hell do them two know that we don't know? Maybe they know. Something. What if we miss out? Do you want to buy? 
Yeah. You buy. That's three. Do you want to buy? I no. don't know. I don't know enough about it. I, I want to buy. It's going good. Do you want to buy? <laughs> no, I think it's overbought. It's grand. Okay. Right. <laughs> grand. Okay. <laughs> Sit down. Good experiment. Right. Thank you. What happened there was, and this happened on the trading floor in the 30s, one guy puts his hand up and says, yeah, yeah, give me gold. And the other guy goes, what does he know that I don't? Panic. Fear. Should I buy a house? Should I buy a car? Should I change? Fear. If I don't do it, what happens if I don't do it? Fear. FOMO. Fear of missing out. Right? It's real. We do it all the time. What, what if... What, what if I leave my wife but I don't find someone else? What, you know, like, it's, it's fear. What if I'm stuck here and it should be somewhere else? Western psychology, there's something better out there. What if we don't get it? When one guy bought, it didn't take long for the second guy. When two had their hand up, someone else had a reflex went. Just in, like, it can become a thing in a trader. You just, you know, you spot the level, you go, I gotta go in. I'll, I'll place a stop order, I'll manage the loss, but I gotta get in, or, or if I'm not in, I can't win. When three go, you know, two more usually walk over. That's five. These are all the Fibonacci numbers. One, two, three, five, eight, Fibonacci numbers. Of the first eight numbers, five are Fibonacci, three are not. They themselves are Fibonacci quantities. It doesn't seem like it. I know it doesn't, you know. But most of nature is skewed towards this pattern of numbers. And we are hard-coded to be able to easily tell the difference between five and three more easily than four and four. Flock of birds in the air, hawk comes down. What levels are they split at? Five to three, 13 to 21, 34 to 21. Fibonacci numbers. Animals do it, swarms do it. Anyone do agile development, your story points? You divide your current story point into your previous story point. Five is 0.618 of eight. Eight is 1.618 times bigger than five. Toyota figured this out when they were doing lean, okay? 1.618 means it's a bit too much. One means I'm okay. 0.618 means it's easy. Give me more. So if your team's average is eight story points, it doesn't matter. Don't make your company do everything five. Eight is okay. Divide eight into every estimate you do, and you'll get 1.618, 1 or 618. And if it's really out of whack, you'll either get 0.382 or 2.618. All the Fibonacci numbers, like all the levels, all the retracement levels, we do it all the time, we don't realize it. It's everywhere. It's in DNA, it's in nature, it's everywhere. It's the spiral, it's in flowers. Once you see it, you can't ever not see it. It's ridiculous. Your facial structure, that's how we do face recognition, really precisely and quickly and easy. We just measure the Fibonacci deviations. We've got gotcha. you. A couple of numbers done. Nothing, no secrets. So now when you look back at Twitter, there are certain patterns that, that happen at this level. And we're very interested in A, B, and C. X, A, B, A, B, C, B, C, D. Five point patterns, harmonics. Four point patterns, just A, B, C, Ds. We're always interested in how far you jump up and how far you pull back. That tells us how aggressively people wanted to buy when they kind of cooled off for a bit, when it fell back and went back in again. Over and back, that's how we tell. So the first pattern, the green one, is what we call a crab. The second green one in the middle is called a gartley. There's another one called a bat. They're all just slang names we give to represent the levels, okay? But the important one is um, that where the pattern finishes, do you see how the price jumps up immediately? Pattern completion zone, price reversal zone. Reaction, consolidation, buying of Twitter, orders getting filled. People running out of orders to fill. Guys who want to buy it having to move their limit order up a bit. You know, price might come back low the next time. You need to soak it all up off those centers. Lower highs, lower highs, boom. Total success, target reached. Pulls back a bit. I, I can almost tell you right now, that is a 50% retrace or near to it, 6.17. Another Fibonacci number, famous part of a Gartley pattern. Wow, it, like from Twitter's ultimate low price, it's it's half a drop, but from the low here, it's 6.618. Comes down again, massive reaction off the second one. When your type one reaction return, type two reaction retrace, lands on a pattern, you get a massive spoof off again. That's even another M pattern there in reaction. It just keeps going on. And it's not down to there's something hidden in the numbers of the price. It's us. That's how we react. We only understand when we go too hard at it that we've gone too hard. And when we pull back too much, we only understand that, you know, we pull back too much. Happens with Netflix. 
totally called it that. Stop showing Star Trek. Oh, you deserve what you get. <laughs> really great show. And uh, yeah, and I did. I called it seven months ago, actually, when it was way up here. I told you it's going to go all the way down there from $300 down to 170 It was painted all over. It was painful to watch it go down and watch people throw money at it. Not one to say I told her so, but I totally I told her so. Anyway, back to the patterns. Um, they're for memory, if you want, what you're looking for, right? You know the price trend. You know the patterns. You know about Fibonacci. You know what you want. You have a better chance than 50-50 of predicting a reversal now. And all you need is 50-50, believe it or not. If you place a $1,000 bet and you are willing to stop loss, which hodlers never do, if you're willing to stop your losses if the value of your if of your position goes less than 1%, but you're willing to take profit if it goes up to 3%, even if you lose half the time, you're up 100 bucks. Your losses are 10, but your wins are three times that. Five wins is 150, five losses is 50 against you, you're up 100. You can only win three times out of 10 and you make 20 bucks after every 10 trades. Jesus, if you just get a bot to do that, and you're only flipping coins, I mean, you've won already. What about when you know where it's going to reverse? How many times do you think your odds can, can increase then? This is really important. A, B, C, D retraces. Last bit of information before we unleash the Python. When you come down on this part, on the V of the M, and you want to check this out at the top of the NASDAQ and the top of Bitcoin, the reciprocal, 1 divided by 894, it gives a number. 1.1186, that's your base number. You're going to multiply that by Fibonacci, 1.13, Fibonacci 1 1.27, 1.41, 4.1618, 2.2618. It'll give you all these levels down here. Watch the price. React on the line. Support, fall below it. Resistance, support, resistance, support, support, resistance. Like it's bouncing between these levels. It's, it's, it's no... It's no coincidence that that's happening. Bots on the market trade aggressively on Fibonacci. Now we're a small fish in a pond, and we're not a big whale, and we're not bots, but we understand human beings, and human beings who know this understand human beings, and program bots to understand human beings, so we know where to expect price reversals. Twitter's never reached that price, but that's really important. It's really important that the ABC suggests that that's a price. Twitter's price to earnings ratio, a bit of fundamental, is 145. It means you buy the stock and you collect dividends every quarter. You need to hold it for 145 years to get your money back. Tesla is 1,077 at its peak. 703 now. That's how you know something's overvalued. Investors like it between 15 and zero. If it's 15, it means after seven and a half years, if you throw in $1,000, you get 500 back in profit. You, you know, made half your money back. Investors love that. When things get to that level, investors jump in because that's better than bonds or anything else, you know, uh, Forex or anything like that. Um, so Twitter was $44 in March 22nd when they announced their earnings and their P is 145. If you divide the P by 10 to get it back down, you know, to a reasonable level, the price in theory should go to 440. What did the ABCD tell you? 433. Investors already know what Twitter is worth. It's not worth a lot. It isn't really. It's a small company. Like, it does a fantastic thing, but it's a small headcount. Uh, technically, it does a very specific thing and targeted ads. So we know the price is going to head that direction, ultimately. Like, Elon Musk, I think, has figured this out. That's why he's backing out of that deal. You know, Twitter would really want to fall 10 times in value. It's worth about $4.5 of a company, I think. And you don't, I know it sounds not like that, but most of the accounts and most of the activity in Twitter took off when Donald Trump took office. And people really loved to fight all the time. So, you know, no coincidence. Price follows us. We follow price. We create supply and demand. Told us so. There you go. Um, so, that's our strategy. That's Twitter. There we go. That's where the price is probably headed. Goals. We've got the concept. You know about Fibonacci. We have the data, right? Open, low, high, close. We know where to get it. We have Python. Place the bets, casinos open 24 seven. What do you need to know? Like I said, you wanna pull five columns of data for every price trend. You can get it from Yahoo, you can get it from Binance. There is a library we'll look at on GitHub. It's all there for you. 
But what you want to do is more important than just, you know, the code right now, just in your head. You want to get the open, low, high close. You want to scan for Fibonacci price levels and reversal zones. Humans think that way. Phi works that way. Bots can follow Phi. Everybody feeling Phi. Time to Phi. No time to Phi. <laughs> get the data, not the jokes. Okay, I got you. Okay, right. So the candlestick data. The codes. So, um... I wrote a library, it's up in GitHub, Nilo C, Python TA, you can totally grab it, you can do what you want to it. I'll just give you a quick run through. Clearly I have cloned it down into a folder, I've CC'd into it, I've activated a, um, a virtual environment I use, the requirements.txt file is on the GitHub page. So you can import Binance and a plotter for yourself. Uh, Binance have API keys if you do have an account and you want to use a bot to trade on your own money. If you just want to read only publicly, don't put any of those keys in. B equals Binance, you got your object. Uh, get the ticker for BTC, USDT, the one hour candles. Each candle represents one hour of time. And um, we want a thousand ticks. Okay, they give you a bit more than the open, high, low, close there, but uh, that's okay. Um, I convert the epoch into a date time for the index. It's, it's easy internally for what I do. And you can plot the thing. And you get that with all the peaks using Plotly. Um, and my library automatically adds your indicators, your RSI, strength of price, MACD, moving average convergence, divergence, and MFI, moving uh, basically an RSI with volume included. So there's a bit too many peaks in there to scan. So you can do things like limit the number of peaks by doing peak spacing, uh, replot, and you get something a little more manageable like that. Um, how do I find the peaks? Just, you know, if anyone's curious, it's Aragrel Extrema in the SciPy library. Uh, you run it on the highs, and you run it on the lows. You need to find the peaks and the highs and the peaks and the lows. You can't use close price only for this. It won't work. <coughs> Those candle wicks touch the Fibonacci levels. Sometimes they don't stay there long, they're gone. You know, the reverses can be aggressive. Um, so you gotta use the peaks. I have some code there. I notice Aragrel Extrema, two peaks are right beside each other, a tweezer top formation. They tend to identify two dots. So that code eliminates one of them and stacks up some other useful information. I want the highs and lows, not in separate arrays. I want them in arrays with indexes, and I want to know which one is high and low as I walk through it and figure out, you know, which part of the Fibonacci level it is, because it's more than just closed price. Um, if you want to plot it, just a little sample of code there. Plotly is a brilliant library. Uh, you, after you do the OAHLC plot, you can do a scatter plot and throw some lines and things on it. Um, and here's an example of that in the code. Again, I've imported the Binance library, the Plotter library, and from their Respect the TA <laughs> package, the divergence and harmonic patterns. Um, and the harmonic patterns, like the B object that I get that ticker data on, I just pass it into patterns and divergence. Uh, activate the search function, just h.search or d.search. It'll throw back a load of information about the times and price levels of the patterns. And I can plot those on a graph and lo and behold, look, every Fibonacci pattern that hit on Bitcoin in the last 1,000 hours. And you can see, because there's been a dump recently, you can see that the peak price, the top, the bullish pattern goes down for deep retraces. And you get a react and price goes up, but the bearish pattern's already building when the price goes up. It's already getting ready for the next reversal. That's how the machine sees it. So up here is a sell point. Comes down, okay? There's another buy point. You can't tell it's a buy point until you get to here and complete a pattern. You're only taking a chance in here. I, historically, you can say, yeah, but it's low and then it's high. Humans do that, right? But you can't tell at the time. We couldn't predict it was going to reverse there. We didn't have enough data. But here was our prediction. And by God, look at it. Now, there's another uh, special... Uh, indicator I have called overbought, oversold, where I kind of do a little bit of a multiplication of these, and it's very good at producing a spike to tell you when the buy and sell. Um, you'll see it on Twitter or anywhere where I publish these things. But there's a lot of data there. Um, you can limit to produce just one pattern in the last, you know, whatever, 15 minutes, one hour, one week, whatever. And um, there's the overbought, oversold indicator. See where it tells you exactly where the lows really are. Big strong sell there. It's another big buy coming back there. It's it's pretty good at it. The math is simple. I don't trust it. I kind of stumbled upon it and it works, but that's no reason to trust it. Um, does it only work in the Python shell? No. Uh, it's built as a command line tool, so it's uh, there's a lot of parameters. They're all explained in the GitHub page and on the uh, in the settings files and YAMLs files. But uh, you can basically get it to pick any uh, ticker you want 
and the data source with it, you know, just a symbol of one hour, limit to 400 candles, output path for your pictures, you know, whether you want formed only or forming, all that stuff. Um, I attach it to cron jobs, stick it on a Raspberry Pi, and let it run all day. And uh, there it is, yeah, at home, just a little cluster. I only use one in that cluster. It, it, Raspberry Pi 4s are beasts of machines. There's so much CPU power, really, like when you're just doing something simple. Um, and that little machine will publish to Twitter once every 24 hours, and it will publish things like this. So you can see the strength of that signal there for reversal, bullish pattern. Uh, probably someone telling me, you know, I'm silly. Uh, there's also a Discord, uh, which it can publish into a lot um, every 15 minutes, every hour, every day, every week, every, come on, Discord, there you go. So uh, there's different channels in here and it will spit out live. It's been doing it all morning. It's been doing it while we're here and uh, can even talk to the bot. Still running at home. Hello. There you go. Grant. So um, use an async Discord library for that. Um, so let me get that back up there. Oh, wrong button. Oh, no. He's interfered with the lords. That be. Bad jokes. Slow internet. There we go. Hey, well, Twitter, Raspberry Pi. Done. Now, not financial advice. Cannot predict the future. Low risk entry. Not trading. But it's all there. It's all in Python. It's pandas, SciPy, bit of maths, bit of Fibonacci. You don't need AI. You don't need machine learning. That's going to lag. You're thinking ahead. And really what you're doing is you're playing on the natural psychology of human beings to not understand what they're doing or why they're doing it, but to move and force over and back to and fro. Um, and there was Bitcoin called seven months ago. I know you can't predict the future, but if you're me, uh, throw this out. Uh, but not financial advice, cannot predict the future. Um, know your enemy. Just before you do go trading, this is real financial advice. Whales, crypto cults, telegrams. I'll be honest, if I could buy, I don't know, let's say Microsoft, you know, 20 years it'd pay me back to own it. I know what the company are doing. They're selling stuff, their earnings, you know, they're giving out money. If I held it for 10, I'd, I'd still be up a lot. So if I construct a portfolio of companies that have good priced earnings and they've got solid jobs, you know, they make stuff, like maybe they mine stuff or they do steel or they do agriculture, I'll win over the long run on that. Bitcoin needs the price to be high to be worth mining it. If it isn't, it's not worth it. It's already not worth it below 20,000. The hardware doesn't do it. So just be really weary. It's not giving you anything back to hold it. And if it goes, and as you're seeing now, most of the people are heavily leveraged, which means they borrow to buy and use their coin, which has gone up in value, to borrow more, to buy more in a circular. I know, you, I saw your face going, what? Yeah, I know, banks used to do it in 2007. Aunt Lai came along and stopped them. And... <laughs> You know, that's what's happening. That's unwinding now. Huge leverage is just going to snap and this thing's going to dump in the crypto space. The rest of the world is going to have trouble. But uh, trends are history. Remember that. Fibonacci is a good guide. Python is excellent. Java is lame and never ever to the point. I couldn't do it in Java. <laughs> I really tried. I was like, go oh, to do an array, first of all. And I was like, you know, fed up listening. Uh, final thoughts. Is Fibonacci really everywhere? Yeah. There's the S&P cycle breaking down. There is the previous bull run and this bull run. There is a NASDAQ, the dot-com boom and bust. We're heading for a very severe reset in that space. And there is a carbon dioxide, which is absolutely to tie, tied to global economics. 1980s crash, 1991 crash, 2000 crash, 2008 crash. Every time the market gets stronger, look at the S&P. Look at the angle of the slopes. Every time we throw more money in, we go more mad, uh, hoover it up. Uh, the next bull run will be dead. Too much CO2. You saw the chart, right? It goes over one degree, we're screwed. It's a point of no return. Next bull run, dead. Dead, bull run. You want to make money? Yeah, you'd be dead. <laughs> you won't be able to spend it, you'd be dead. No, your enemy, you're dead, bull run. What's he saying? He tricked us. Anyhow, there you go. I'll take any questions, that's me. Thank you. Where's the mic? Yes, so we, have a, we have a mic.
Mike, where yeah, are so, you? Yeah, so use the mic if you want to ask a question. Meathogs, right? Crazy? <laughs> this mic, yeah? This one, I want that here, cool. Cool. Oh, I see. Yeah, cool. Shoot. Okay. okay, so I think that every strategy is like the ones that you kind of showed in the earlier are are tested in reality when we gather whatever data we have up to a specific point in time, yeah. then we make our assumptions and we, let's say, run simulated training in the past what we consider a future. So do you have any estimations about that, that you at some point in time said, okay, so this would be my strategy if I would want to trade that specific way and then simulate? Uh, yeah. The of course, if you can and want to share it. No, no, no. So, so my strategy is, uh, so my strategy is when I, when I see a pattern form, there will be a reaction but it depends on how eager people are to buy, right? So if the reaction is heavy, it's high. And let it go, it went. When it slows a bit, it means there's a big player probably has 200 billion worth of orders in a block at that price range. And you know the buyers who have rolled in behind don't have enough momentum to carry it. So when it slows a bit, that's when I pay attention because we're gonna get a check back. And when we get a check back, if that if it bounces there again, if that support is still there, if those 200 billion of orders are still filling up, now it's good to get on side with the whale. There's no way I can move it, but there are there are, there's a famous story in Merrill Lynch, a commodities trader who does this stuff. He was brought down to the manager at the desk, showed him, you know, this is the range, this is where this is where it'll go, sir, and the mats and the blah, you know. And the guy said, Yeah, amazing. He just picked the phone and he's like, Yeah, sell, you know, two hundred percent there, please. And Dived it, right, they dived the corn market right down. Hmm. Looked them in the eye and said, if I can do that, anyone can do that. So just, you know, this is great when the market's healthy and we have participants. Occasionally, occasionally, you'll get it done. Stop losses. For us small guys, right, you know, like I said, if it goes more than 10% against you, okay, just walk away. Next scenario. In the long run, you'll win. So my trading strategy is literally keep trading with the same approach, keep your numbers tight. You know, maybe only use $100 or $10, whatever you want. See the profits go up slowly over time. When you have the balance right, when it's three for one or whatever your risk reward, you will know you have the right, you know, be patient. I mean, there's 20,000 cryptocurrencies. There's two or 3,000 stocks. Patterns hit, like I'd have a headache if I reacted every 15 minute pattern. A bot can do it for me, but for me, for the bigger, you know, macro, daily, weekly timeframes, be patient and it'll come to you. Okay, so it's not like fully automated, but you get kind of hints from the stuff yeah. that you wrote, and then you yeah. do final analysis. I on do have a bot, and he will trade it for me. It will, you know, whatever. Um, but if I didn't have a bot, I would just be patient to see the confirmation. But the bot can spot the confirmation for me as well. Um, I'll make that public in the next release so you can see target entry confirmation. You can lose as much money as me. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I think we're, we're good. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.